All right, guys, this video, I'm going to give you some very simple, quick tips for the grease pencil. Uh, I hope you like it. This is in Blender 2.83.1, blender.org to get it. All right, let's go. All right, this tip is for tablet users. So up at the top, you'll see the different options for your pen. And you can just middle mouse click and scroll if it's uh, too small up there. And the one that I'm going to focus on is curves. This used to be like a very scary options. I didn't know exactly what it meant, but let me just teach you like a simple, I guess, rule of thumb. So I think usually the sensitivity is set to like this little white dot here is like in the middle of this square. So wherever we place this square for the testing that we're about to do, it's going to fall along the, the middle squares and the middle crosses. So it'll be here, the middle, cross, the middle, cross, the middle, cross, the middle. And that's really where we're gonna be placing this dot. So what this does is changes the sensitivity uh, of your tablet. Well, not of the tablet settings, but of Blender and how it takes in the, the pressure from your pen and makes it so if you press harder, maybe it takes a lot more strength to make it uh, the full uh, sensitivity or how big it is and then if you have it like this it'll be a lot softer uh, another rule of thumb is to remember that each tablet is different and have different settings for them so if you go to your own tablet settings you see that you can have the click sensitivity here and I even have it uh, a little softer and you can see this little pressure meter I don't know if all uh, tablets have this, but it's definitely check out how hard you want to be pressing. So keep in mind, you don't want to be like destroying your like hand to press to get at the highest sensitivity and then try to make a straight line. That actually makes it a lot harder. So first mess with your settings of your tablet. And then once you're in Blender, you can start doing uh, some tests on how you like your curves. So for curves right now, we could do it. We're just going to do it for sensitivity which will be for the size of the brush. And we'll tr first try it in linear. So I click on here and I click reset curve. It will set everything to linear. So a uh, practice line that you should do is try to make a straight line and then alternate between soft and hard, uh, pushing down softly and pushing down uh, not as softly. So we'll start here. We'll start out soft go harder go softer harder softer and then just alternate and make these lines and what you're trying to gauge is how, is this easy for you to make a straight line and change the pressure as you're going across so right now this is what this looks like what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to make it so it's bigger when it's smaller from the line above and then go back to smaller and you can just do this a bunch of times and you can start really gauging if you like these settings. Does this feel natural? Does it feel forced? Should, is there something you need to practice on? So then now let's try to see the lines with the curve with this little white dot right here in the center square. With this center there and then we'll do it again. Bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. And this one feels a lot more natural. Like that you see I can get some more consistent lines it changed I'm assuming that's like the auto smooth feature that blender has which you can always turn off I think it's right here stroke post-processing and the active smooth so just do these lines see if you like it and just for good measure we'll do one more we'll bring this line even lower and we'll go smaller bigger smaller bigger you see how this one just looks pretty bad so this setting is not for me unless this is what you're aiming for something that ha you can make just quick jagged lines that are connected but uh, that's the exercise you should use for this curve here all right for this tip it will be about tinting your different line uh, work and your fills what I when I usually make artwork I like to use a like a black background with white ink or white paint whatever you want to call it and paint that way I think it's easier on the eyes but at the end I'm gonna to need to change all of those and of course I can go and into the material and change that but another way to do it if it's easier for you you can always go to the modifiers tab click on your stroke go to the modifiers 
add modifier, go to tint. And then for the layer, you'll specify which layer you want this tint to apply it to. So we'll put it something extreme. So if you see, I can just choose different layers and see it's affecting the, the buckles right there, or we can put it on the head, it affects the head. But right now we want it for the whole outline. I named that outline to make it easy. And now it is pink. You could put this at one, so that'll make it at 100% like influence or strength. I don't know if putting two makes it brighter or something. Let's see. Nope, two doesn't really do anything. So we'll put it at one. And you see that it is now uh, pink. And of course, that's not a good color to have. You can change it to different colors. But something that you can also do is make this uh, a gradient. So you go to gradient and you see nothing happens and this turns red. And that's because it wants you to have an object from where the gradient radiates from. So we're going to create, go to object mode up here, shift A, and then we're going to create an empty. And I usually like to use the sphere empties for this because uh, they're easier to see and easier to grab when you're clicking on them. So here's the sphere uh, empty and we'll put it right here in the corner and we will make this tint, which will be for the whole outline. We can rename it here outline and make sure that we put the where is it object there we go object and then we'll click on the empty and now it's radiating from here you really can't tell well for a little bit you can so we'll put on some more extreme colors let's see instead of black we'll do something like i'll do her the blue and then i will do the green all right now you can see that the outline uh kind of changes gradient color oh you really can't tell let's change that to something extreme and now you can see that the gradient is radiating from this empty and this is good if you want like a gradient to go from top to bottom so we'll do it from the top here we'll go and we'll change the settings so the strength or the radius is bigger and just so we can really see this, we'll add another modifier, go to thickness, and we'll make it the same, affect the same layer, so outline, and then we'll make this thicker, just to, to be able to see this. Let's put like 100. So as you see, the lines are changing color, depending on how far it is from the empty that you specified. And this is good if you wanna, I don't know, do some something creative with those outlines. Obviously it won't be that strong. We'll put the thickness down. And uh, yeah, that's it for this tip. Color your outlines or don't, do whatever you want. All right, here's another tip. These grease pencil uh, objects right here, they can be affected by lights now. Usually when you make a grease pencil layer, let's see, we can go to it one now, you could see here in the properties I have a bunch of layers all these layers have their individual options where you can choose use lights and I don't know I think I turned them all off for all of these but usually when you create a new layer it's already on you don't even have to worry about it so then the next thing you do is let me just go through and turn these on all right now that they're all the uh, turned on you see that it is dark and that's because I have no lights here so I'm just gonna create a light I already have one here but we'll just go through it get this light and delete it all right so all you have to do is do shift a go to light and I usually like to do an area light so let's look back through the camera move the, the light and see if you can see it over here better There you go. So you can see that I'm moving the light away and then I'll point it at the stroke and it needs to be brighter. So I will make that light brighter at 10 Watt, I guess is what it stands for. I'll do hundred Watt. You see it's a lot um, brighter and you can change the color and you can do all sorts of like neat, maybe like night effects or like neon city effects. You can make it bigger, but that really doesn't affect anything. Put it at 200 and you can start lighting your 
2D animation scenes with light affecting them. It's really neat. Just make sure that uh, the light is on. And another thing to remember is see how in this panel it's showing up dark still. And that's because you have to be in rendered mode. Right here it's in material preview. And all these previews, obviously the lights aren't affecting it. But it's the rendered mode where it works. So if it's still not working for you, make sure you go to the layers on your stroke. Make sure that the, it says use lights. And make sure that you are in this rendered mode here. And you'll see that uh, your lights affect your stroke. I think it's amazing. It looks Just adding this light looks a lot better. All right, for this tip, this is just a tip for how I like to do things when it comes to shading the uh, characters or shading anything in, in Blender uh, Grease Pencil. I like to make a shadow layer and I put it over usually everything else. I start off by making a base of the color. So I have the base of the, the clothes, the base of the head, and then let's see, the base of the head, base of the hair. So I have basically all the solid colors there and I then make a layer that's called shadow and what shadow does, let me show you right here is I just use a, a, a white or gray color. I usually tint it to blue. I think this, this white goes towards blue. So I use a white tint it maybe a little bit to blue or I pick a, 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 a white that's closer to a cooler color. And then I put it on that shadow layer and then I go to blend mode and I hit multiply. And then that is how I make my shadows for my uh, drawings. I find it a lot easier to deal with, especially when it's just on one layer and I can always tint the shadow to make it um, feel a little bit differently or, or harmonize with different colors. So like if you go to add modifier, go to tint, let's type in shadow here. We can now tint the shadow whatever color we want, make it darker, make it lighter, make it tint towards more of a cool color or a, a warmer color. And you can really have a lot of control over your shadows, colors and how they appear. All right, while you're making your artworks and drawings, uh, sometimes you would want to flip the canvas so you can get some fresh eyes on it and see all the mistakes. When I was first making this, I actually didn't do that at all. So, Let's see what it looks like flipped. I bet you I can catch a lot of mistakes. So what you do is you go to the effects panel, visual effects properties, go to add effect, click on flip, and then you get your character flip. And you can always just click horizontal on and off, and you can flip your whole object so you can see it from different sides. And honestly, just from flipping it, I can already see that this hair probably needs to be shaped up a little better, the back, the neck i mean you definitely see a lot more of your uh what needs to be worked on in your artwork if you flip it so i definitely suggest using this effect flip your canvas all right a modifier that can add some life to your drawings is noise and if you go to add modifier and click noise you see that it gets all really distorted but honestly if we put this factor down to like yeah, i don't know 0.08 uh, and we hit play, you can see that there's some movement there and this step means uh, how often it happens. So this is every fourth frame. So if we could do it every 12th frame, you can see that it's a little slower, but you know, once we have it in the four to six range, definitely looks like one of those like stop motion animation or, you know, low frame rate, not stop motion, just low frame rate animation. And this can be a really quick fix for, um, adding some life to a scene, especially done to characters or background characters and things like that. Definitely check this one out. All right, for this tip is uh, using vertex paint. Uh, sometimes I can find using vertex paint to be a little confusing, especially with the already established material system that we have here. So let's say you just have a bunch of materials listed here and that's what you've been using to color your uh, character. And then you start, wanted to start using uh, vertex paint so what I like to do to make it easier is I make two materials. I make a, a vertex fill and I make it black and then I make sure it only has the fill checked. And then I get a vertex stroke and I make sure that this strokes only checked here. So now I got a vertex fill and a vertex stroke, right? So then if I go to 
random material and I'm going to draw with this random material up here. You can see that it is the color that the random material is. This ugly blue pink thing I have. So if to switch to vertex mode, you click on this little icon here, vertex color, and then I have it set to orange. Now sit down and watch what happens. Now my outline is orange, like this color. And you're like, why is it just the outline? So when you go into the, um, click on the color, you can go on the mode and this can affect the stroke or you can do the fill or the stroke and the fill. And see, I just changed it to stroke and fill. It doesn't change the one I already put on here, but when I make a new one, it now affects both of them. And then if you were to, let's say, make this material invisible, all your vertex color paint, hopefully this doesn't get too confusing, uh, goes with it. It's all attached to this material, right? So to make that easier, let's erase both. Uh, I set this to stroke and fill. And then when I want to use a fill, I just use the vertex fill and you'll see that. Oh, oh didn't have enough. Oh, there we go. All right, it just had no alpha, or it had alpha. Let's erase this. All right, so now when I want to do vertex paint, I click on the vertex paint icon, I make sure that it's on stroke and fill, and then I use vertex fill here, and then I just fill it in. And if I want to change the color, I change the color. That's what I meant to pick. I was like, that was weird. Okay, then it's red. You pick different colors. And all this vertex painting is connected to the vertex fill. And if I were to go to vertex stroke, now uh, when I use the vertex uh, mode here, it just does a stroke. And having this vertex fill material and vertex stroke material and having all my vertex coloring painted to those materials makes it just a lot easier to manage or at least a lot easier to uh, understand or organize once you start getting a ridiculous amount of materials and layers. A general tip I like to give is something I always caught myself doing. I kept trying to draw something perfectly the first time. So I would undo, do the circle, undo, do the circle. But you're in a pretty advanced software and you have to start thinking outside of just drawing the line perfectly the first time. So what you can do is you can draw the circle and if you go to edit mode, just know that you can select this stroke. And right now I'm selecting a point from it, but you can go to points or stroke or the object. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not object, that is... Okay, it's all stroke points. Uh, and then, but to sw easily switch between this, you can hit one, two, three, right above the QWE. So I'll go to two, which will be the stroke, grab that. And you're like, oh man, I need this to be a lot better. So you can just scale it, hit S. You can scale it on the X, rotate it, scale it on the X, and you can start really shaping it out. And then if you want to smooth it, you see all these points make up your line. So you can always go to right click while that they're all selected and hit smooth points. And then to repeat an action, you can hit a uh, shift R and it will repeat the last action you did. So you see these lines get a lot smoother and we could just keep going about 200 <laughs> and then we'll go to stroke. And these are a lot of points just to make a smooth line. You can minimize the, the, the vertices by going to simplify adaptive and you can choose how much you want to how many, how many of those uh, vertices you want to get rid of? I think this is really important when you start getting into projects with like thousands and thousands and millions of strokes. Um, and uh, it's also feels good to be clean in your workflow. <laughs> All right, those are some quick tips uh, I have for you guys today. Um, when I make another project, I usually find these tips as I'm working on things. So you'll be seeing more of these type of videos soon. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.